Hello, SQL is a standardized language uh, to perform several tasks against uh, databases. SQL is an acronym for Structured Query Language. In this video we will have a look at the part of SQL uh, called DDL, which stands for Data Definition Language. In an earlier uh, video, we built a database with tables, columns, primary keys, foreign keys, etc. with the graphical tools available in SQL Server. Now we will um, expand this model with more tables, but now we will use SQL to define the data structure instead of uh, SQL Server's graphical tools. Here we see an overview of the three main parts of uh, SQL. Part one is the data definition language and it's about defining the database structure with its tables, columns, primary keys, foreign keys, etc. DDL is also used when you need to alter already existing tables to change the structure. Maybe you for instance need to add the column, add or delete the foreign key, or doing other similar types of changes to the structure. Then you will use the statements in the DDL part of SQL. Part 2 is uh, DML, which is an acronym for Data Manipulation Language. This part of SQL contains statements for operating on data. So, while the DDL part was about the structure needed to store data, the DML part is about storing and manipulating specific data inside this created structure. The third part is DCL, an acronym for Data Control Language. This part contains uh, SQL statements for creating, changing and deleting users and user roles, and for specifying and granting permissions to databases and tables. We will have a look at the three main statements in the DDL, which is create table for creating a new table, alter table when we need to modify a table, and drop table when we need to delete uh, an entire table. We will see some uh, examples on how to use uh, these statements to create new tables and how to change an existing table structure and also how to delete a part of or an entire table. This is a link to w3schools.com and uh, here you will find an overview of statements uh, and a set of tutorials both for SQL and uh, for a lot of uh, other programming languages and uh, also other data elements. So I advise you to take a look at this. Here you find uh, most of the statements uh, explained and when you choose one of them you can see examples and you can also uh, try it yourself. This is the basic uh, syntax for creating a table with uh, SQL. We use the create table statement uh, and specify the name of the table. Then we specify each uh, attribute or a column name. For each column name we have to specify a data type. In addition, one can specify a default value to be used if the user leaves uh, this field empty when inserting data. One can also specify if the fields uh, shall accept uh, null values or not. And a column can be set to accept only unique values. Primary keys and foreign keys can be defined by the constraint keyword. For a primary key, an identifier must be defined like uh, here. Use uh, pk underscore to start the identifier name and then add the table name, which is this one in this case. Then one can easily know the identifier name without having seen it, if we for instance later need to write the code to change the primary key. The primary key attribute or uh, attributes is listed inside parentheses. If it is a combined primary key, then use commas to separate each att attribute uh, part of the key. For instance, attribute 1, comma, attribute 2. And uh, here we see a foreign key defined. Here we let the identifier start with fk underscore, followed by the name of the table uh, the foreign key belongs to, which is this table. And then the name of the table it references. Using this as a naming convention makes us uh, able to know the name of the identifier without having seen it defined. And here we tell which attribute or attributes uh, the foreign key consists of. And uh, that has to be one or uh, more of these attributes. Now let's look at uh, some examples. In an earlier video we made an equipment database consisting of two tables and a foreign key between them. And this was done by using uh, the graphical tools in SQL Server. 
Now we want to add uh, one more table to this uh, structure. Uh, and this uh, table shall contain uh, information about, about the, the employees in the company. But now we will do this with an SQL statement. So we can write create table and then we have to give the table a name and here we have na named it employee. And we have to specify each column in the table and we want to have six columns. And for each column, we have to specify a data type. And we can also define uh, other uh, restrictions. For instance, we can say that we will not allow null values and we will not uh, allow uh, re repetitive uh, values like here. The primary key will always be unique and not null. So we don't have to specify not null and unique for this one. Uh, when we define it as a primary key, then it will automatically uh, get these restrictions. And we want to uh, use employee ID as the primary key. So we have to specify that. And that is done down here. And uh, as we showed earlier, we use this PK underscore and the table name as uh, the identifier name for the primary key. And then we specify the attribute or attributes that will be part uh, of the primary key. Here, the primary key will consist of only one field, and that is employee ID. So to run this uh, query, we go to a SQL Server and we choose the database. We want to run it in, and we can open a new query. Be sure to check uh, that uh, it's the right database you're running here. It should be when you have selected it, or else you can select it from the list of all your databases. And we have the query window, window here. So I will now run this create table statement and see what happens. Command completed successfully. Uh, I will not see the table here at once, but if I just select tables and click the F5 button to refresh, then I will see the employee here. And I can go to the database diagram. I can right click and can add table and add this new table to the diagram. Let's say that we want uh, to register when an employee borrows some equipment. Then we can create uh, a new table to um, register the loans and this uh, new table should have a reference to the equipment table and to the employment table. And this can be done by making or creating um, foreign keys. Here we use uh, SQL to create such a table. We name the table loan, so we have create table loan and we specify all its attributes or column names. I want a unique loan ID to identify each loan. And, uh, I need an employee ID to reference employee ID in the employee table. I need equipment ID to reference equipment ID in the equipment uh, table. And we also want to register which date the loan happened and uh, if the loan is returned or not. So, so this will be a true false. Here we specify the primary key, which uh, will be loan ID, this unique uh, field. We will have two foreign keys, one from the table loan, which is this, to the table employee. And uh, we want to connect uh, the employee ID from the first table to employee ID in the second table. Then we need a foreign key from the loan table, which is this, to the equipment table. Here we want to connect the equipment ID from the loan table to equipment ID in the equipment table. So now I will run this query. So I go to this diagram window, I open a new query, I will get a new folder here. We write the query and we click execute or the F5 button command completed successfully. Then I advise you to close this window with the diagram and we can go to this tables in the object explorer and click F5 button and we will here see the new table. And now we open the diagram again and we right click add table and now we will find this loan and I add this to the diagram. Close and hopefully we will also see the foreign keys. 
So now we see this new table we created named loan with a foreign key here from um, employee ID here to employee ID here and we have this other with equipment ID referencing equipment ID in this table. Let's say that we also want some information about uh, the, the employee's uh, position in the company. We want to register some uh, position codes and uh, for each code we want to uh, have a description. Then we can make a new table like this with uh, SQL, create table, name it position. We, have, uh, def we define uh, two columns, position ID and title, and we specify that position ID will be the primary key of this table. I then go to the query window in SQL Server, write this query, we can uh, select it to run only this and click execute, command completed successfully, I go to object explorer and click F5 to refresh and then I will see my new table here. I can also go to the data database diagram, I can uh, right click and add table and refresh and add this to the diagram. I can move it closer to the employee table. To be able to register the position of each uh, employee I need a foreign key from employee to position. Several employees can have the same position but one uh, employee will have exactly one position. So this is a one-to-many relationship. There's uh, two things we have to do. We have to make a foreign key in this employee so I want a position ID field in this uh, employee uh, table so that it can reference position ID in the other table. So I need to add a column here and then I need to add a foreign key. To change the table structure after the tables uh, are created we can do by using the alter statement. We need to run two statements. The first one is uh, an alter table where we alter the employee table and we add a column like this, add position ID, will, which will be the name of the column, and we have to specify the data type, which uh, here is uh, in integer. And when we have done that, then we can make the foreign key. Then we use the statement alter table again, and the same table, employee, and we add a constraint. And we give it uh, an identifier uh, using the naming convention as before. So it's a, re a reference from the employee table to the position table. It's a foreign key and uh, it's uh, the field position ID with, which is the foreign key and it references the position table and there it is a reference to the position ID column. So we start uh, by running this one. Alter table employee ID add position ID integers. We then add a new column execute and it was successfully executed so I opened my diagram I go to this uh, equipment table my employee table excuse me and we now see that we have this new column position ID which is the same column name we used in the other position table and then we have to make the foreign key and then I advise you to save this diagram and uh, close it and we run this uh, second alter table statement I select it and execute it it completed successfully so now I open my diagram and hopefully we will have a foreign key here and we have that so now we have a foreign key from position ID in employee from the new column they made and to the position ID column in the position table. So this is the way to change an existing table structure by using the alter statement. We can also use uh, alter table in combination with the uh, alter column to change a column's data type. When we created the position table we use a maximum of 20 characters for the title column. Now we are going to change this to 30 characters. Remember that uh, widening a data type is uh, normally okay, but uh, narrowing uh, could be risky. 
if we have stored some information with 30 characters and then changed the column to a maximum of 20 characters, then we would have lost some information. The same regards to, for instance, uh, changing a float data type to an integer uh, data type. Then we would lose some uh, decimal precision. If we go to Object Explorer and right-click uh, over the position table and uh, select Design, and we see here that we have defined 30 characters at, as a maximum for title. Now I close uh, this one, this design view, and we can um, change the data type with this SQL statement. I run this and it should change to 30 characters. Okay, before I right click over position, I uh, select the tables and refresh, or else uh, you will not always see the change. So I go then go to position, right click and go to design. And now I can see that it has changed from 20 to 30. Uh, with alter table in combination with the drop column, we can delete uh, a column in the table. So if I want to delete uh, this title column, we can um, run these uh, statements. And we can go to the tables, right click and uh, take a refresh or F5 button. And now I go to position. Open it again right by right clicking and uh, go to design. And now we see that uh, the title column is deleted. Let's say that we want to delete uh, this table position. Then, since we have a foreign key from employee to position, we will have to delete uh, this foreign key before we can delete this position table. Else, we will have some uh, reference uh, integrity uh, error from uh, the system. So, we have the need of two operations. First, deleting the foreign key, and then deleting the position table. To delete uh, the foreign key, we use uh, the alter table, employee. And then we say drop constraint. And we have to give the name of the identifier of the foreign key. And if we have uh, used uh, the naming convention as explained earlier, then we know that this will start with FK and we will have the from table and the to table from the for the foreign key. So now I will run this uh, query, execute, com command completed successfully. So I open my diagram again. And now I will see that the foreign key is removed. And then we will be able to delete uh, this table. And to do that, we use the drop table command. And the drop table statement needs uh, the name of the table we want to drop or delete, which I have written here, drop table position. And then we execute, command completed successfully. Then I close this diagram, save it, and uh, yeah, can have a refresh and open it again. And now, yes, okay, one table is removed and that's exactly what we wanted.